My name is Maureen Meyer. I'm a physical therapist and certified lymphedema therapist. I will be speaking to you of wellness and exercise, also energy conservation techniques, which include the three Ps, planning, prioritizing and pacing yourself. First thing I wanna talk about a little bit is energy conservation. And some of you may have been already practicing this during your treatments, but some things to keep in mind because some of your treatments, though they're done, you still may be feeling fatigue and limitations in mobility. So you wanna adopt the three Ps, planning, prioritize, and pacing yourself. Number one, planning. You wanna gather your supplies in advance. So say you're gonna do cleaning for the day. Can you have some cleaning supplies in each room that you might need so you don't have to go back and forth, back and forth? You wanna call ahead in stores to check availability of items. Can you order things online? Online grocery shopping can be very helpful. A lot of people got used to online shopping with the pandemic and it's just a good tool to, to save your energy, to maybe get in your exercise or activities you wanna do. When you cook, can you cook in a little larger quantity? Put some in the freezer for storage. You wanna schedule your day accordingly. When do you have your most energy? If you're better in the morning, then plan some of your heavier tasks for the morning time as opposed to waiting till late afternoon. Same with appointments. Things that could be make it a little easier, use some paper plates and plastic utensils so you're not having to do dishes as often. And keeping maybe a daily journal might be a help to you to find out when are your best times of the day to do activities and go from there. Prioritizing, eliminate or reduce the tasks that are not that important to you. Really think about what do you have to get done that day and that's what you wanna focus on. Can you delegate tasks to family or friends? If people are asking you, can I help you in any way? Take them up on that and maybe have them do some cooking for you, some cleaning. Can they run an errand for you? Can they go pick up the kids? Things like that. Maybe somebody walking your dog. Can you hire professionals? There's dog walking services, pet grooming, grocery shopping, assistance, you could have someone cut your grass, anything like that that might be helpful to save the energy for the things that you want to do. And we have to sort of get used to the effect that it's going to take a little while to find out what your new normal is and how much you can do. So some acceptance that maybe I can't get everything done on my list, what's the most important thing and try to focus on that. Pace, can you sit rather than stand for activities such as cutting up vegetables, meal prep, ironing, other activities that you might be doing, bill pain, maybe using a computer stand that goes up and down. So some of the time you can sit, some of the time you can stand, you can change up the activity a bit. Can you use some prepared foods now and then? I realize it could be a higher sodium content and our dietitian will speak to that later, but sometimes that'll make it a little easier. Bag salad will make it a little easier for you not having to chop things. Again, look for online, grocery shopping if possible, maybe use the motorized carts that they have in grocery stores and or some of our stores such as Target or Walmart so you can get around and get things that you wanna purchase with less tasking your energy. Okay, so let's get moving. The National Comprehensive Cancer Network research has found no harmful effects on patients with cancer from moderate exercise and has demonstrated that those of exercise regularly had 40 to 50% less fatigue. We all want less fatigue. With your treatments, this will really be helpful to start pushing your activity level a little bit. During cancer treatments, exercise has been shown to increase muscle mass and joint flexibility, improve your cardiovascular fitness, protects your bone health, but it also elevates your mood, offering a drug-free relief for feelings of depression. Precautions, you do not wanna exercise if you're feeling very short of breath, if your blood pressure is higher than normal, if you feel unsteady, you could do seated exercises and have someone present when you go from sit to stand if possible. Listen to your body. Some days you may be feeling better than others. Every day will not always be your best day and you might have two good days in a row and then feel pretty washed out and you wanna slow down with your program. Break up exercise into smaller increments if needed. Instead of a 30 minute walk, could you do three 10 minute walks and then progress from there. Some of the activities we like to do to, to keep you active I'd like to review that now, but first I really want to talk about posture awareness. What is good posture? Um, we want to look from the side, show uh, your ear over your shoulder, over your hip. If you tend to slouch rolling forward, when I try to lift my shoulders, I can't move as well. When I try to turn my head, my motion is restricted and taking a deep breath is also restricted. So with standing up, you are now able to clear your arms up overhead. You'll be able to turn your head fully side to side, and you'll also be able to get deeper breathing. 
What is your normal motion? A little bit for shoulders, we're gonna go over that quick. You wanna be able to reach your arms up overhead, almost to elbows to the ear, and out to the side and around. Now I realize depending on your surgery and your recovery rate, you might not be there at that level, but this is kind of what we're shooting for. The other important thing is breathing. If you put your hands on your rib cage, if you take a nice deep breath in, you wanna feel that your rib cage is moving. So I want everybody to take a deep breath in and then blow out like you're blowing out candles. And you should feel your ribs move inward. If they do, then you're getting the, the breath all the way down to the diaphragm. This is helpful both from a fatigue level for getting the proper oxygenation, but also for lymphedema prevention, which we'll talk on a little bit later. Exercises, really everybody could do. The shoulder blade squeeze, and you wanna look at getting your shoulder blades back together. It helps open up the chest wall. Again, helps for breathing, for posture. But also, if you have that forward rolled position and you have limitations in your shoulder movement, it'll also limit your strength. So you're gonna put your arms out to the side, and sometimes this is referred to as a W. So if you look the way it moves up and down, and you're bringing your shoulder blades together. Another real good one is bicep curls, which is bringing your arms up and down and you can start with them without a weight. You can start with a water bottle in your hand so you don't have to go out and buy weights and gradually progress from there. Another good one is wall push-ups or the chair push-ups. So a wall push-up, you're gonna put your hands on the wall about shoulder width apart and stepping back maybe a foot or two and you're gonna come into the wall like a push-up and then push out. So that starts getting a little bit of stretch but also works a little bit with strengthening as well. You can also do it in your chair as you're seated, and then you're gonna put your hands on the armrest and try to push yourself up and down. So you work in the muscles in the back of the arm, the triceps. Chair squats are very good to do. So you can hold on to the back of the chair, sit back, and then straighten up. Also a good spot to do this is your kitchen sink because you're not gonna have that pulled out of the wall. It's gonna be stable, so you're gonna hold on and then squat back and then come on back up. That's good for your muscles in the front of your thighs and back as well as your gluteal muscles, which are the ones you need from getting up from chairs, climbing stairs, getting up from the toilet, getting in and out of a bathtub. Calf raises, going up and down on your toes. Again, stretching out your mobility for your ankle, but also doing some strengthening for your lower leg. And then side leg raises help again with stability for your hip with walking. You could be holding onto your kitchen sink or a chair you're bringing one leg out to the side, and this way you're also getting some balance on the other leg, and then you're gonna bring the other leg out to the side. Again, working on strengthening and balance at the same time. Lower body, there's a couple ones that you could do seated. So you would be sitting in a chair, and you're gonna extend the right leg fully. You're gonna to try to keep yourself seated upright, holding your tummy tight, and then bring your leg down. That's gonna work your quadricep muscles. Straight leg raise. When you're laying back, you're gonna bend one knee up and that's gonna help protect your spine and you're gonna lift the other leg up and down slowly. And that will give you strength for your quadricep muscle in front of your leg. Bridging is a real good one. You're gonna lay on your back with your knees bent up and then you're gonna push down and raise your bottom up off the bed. And that's again gonna help your gluteal muscles but also your quadricep muscles. Lymphedema. It's a swelling of a body part, most often in the arm or leg caused by an accumulation of lymph fluid, although it can also occur in the face, neck, abdomen. Although it is chronic, it can be usually brought under control by good care and attention to certain basic rules. Lymphedema treatments are often provided for cancers of the breast, uterus, bladder, ovary, prostate, testicle, lymphoma, but also our head and neck cancers. Lymphedema Treatments are commonly given uh, due to the removal of lymph nodes for cancers of the breast, uterus, bladder. Lymphedema can occur after cancer surgery involving removal of lymph nodes, radiation, and or chemotherapy. So you may see that in, in many of our cancers, any of your head and neck cancers, uh, breast cancer, ovarian cancer, prostate cancer, to name a few, can occur unfortunately several years following the surgery or cancer treatment. So it's something we want you to be aware of. If you notice sudden onset of swelling, you're gonna contact your medical doctor immediately. So there could be reasons for your swelling. Maybe 
not necessarily that it's an onset of lymphedema, sudden onset of swelling. So things you might notice, say in your arms, are you noticing that the wrist, one side is bigger than the other, your fingers are a little puffy, your watch is tight, are your shirt sleeves fitting differently? How about with your legs? Are you notice when you're putting your socks on that one side seems to be more snug than the other? Your pants are not fitting quite the same. With the head and neck, it's usually more visible in this lower area right below your chin, but also in your cheeks. Sentara Office Therapy for Lymphedema Management. So we offer personalized one-on-one -on -one care, both as a PT or OT and lymphedema therapist. They will look at your mobility, measure your swelling, and address a plan of care, oftentimes including a massage type treatment, which helps to move the fluids away from the, the swollen area. Sometimes compression, people might be familiar with seeing compression sleeves or, or leg garments. And then we also focus on exercise, what you can do for long-term self-management. We also provide rehab screening, which is free to survivors, and determine if they need physical therapy services. If you're feeling that, I'm not sure if I could benefit from services, you do not need to have a doctor prescription to schedule the screening. There's a few tests that we perform to look at your balance, your mobility, and based on that score, whether you may be appropriate for a home program, a group exercise program, or a physical therapy one-on-one. -on -one. To schedule a screening, call the number on your screen and the scheduler will help you find the most convenient location for you. If a PT evaluation is needed, the center will contact your medical doctor for a prescription. Therapy could help improve the quality of your life, so why not see if you could benefit?